Hey, what's up guys? We actually recorded a pre-roll that went wrong, so we're re-recording it here right now. We did a past version of this episode about a year ago. Go check out that episode. And Mel, you got something to say to our audience? Yes, so we're getting a lot of questions asking, how can we bring Middle Ground to our college campus? Well, fill out the link in the description box below. Description box below. We're gonna come to your college campus. Okay, enjoy the episode. See you afterwards. I didn't get any boobs. What did I do when I started making money? I went and bought boobs. It's like, that's what I wanted. You're gonna die from your implants. Like, I'll die a D cup. Hi, my name is Tim. I'm a community organizer here in LA. I work on environmental justice, social justice, housing justice, and uh, incarceral state issues. My name is Christiana Hurt. I'm the owner of the seven-figure brand Wealthy College Kid. I'm 24 years old. My name is Graham. I'm a real estate agent, real estate investor, and YouTuber. Uh, my name is Beatrice. I am 21, and I am a Target worker. My name is Brett Knudsen. I am an entrepreneur and an investor. My name is Tierra Lucky, and I am a minimum wage worker. I just Hustle, do Instacart, and I'm also an actress. The first prompt is, I worked for everything I earned. So I grew up with two parents that were basically paycheck to paycheck, and none of them had any extra money. It was by seeing my parents struggle like that that I really realized the value of money. So I basically poured everything I had into my work. There were years, I would say four years, that I didn't have any friends. From 18 to 22, it was just me. And I was working from probably 8 a.m. until midnight, uh, working as a real estate agent. I completely agree. I think that what a lot of people discount is all the sacrifices that are made. I didn't go to parties. I don't really honestly have like a ton of friends. And it's not like a sacrifice where I was like, I'm gonna have no friends, but you can only balance so many plates or you drop everything. And the plate that I chose to give up was a social life. There's a lot of labor and communal effort that goes into getting all of us here that we don't get paid for, that other people don't get paid for. The examples that you two gave are perfect, actually. You both earn your money by extracting value from capital transactions. You know, you are not building the house you're selling. You're not out there working like in a slave mine, pulling selenium out of the earth like some people on this planet are. And we have to re-understand what it means to earn money and how we all interact to do that. How, how would you address, based off extracting value, if you start a company from the ground and then you build it into a multi-million dollar company? But no one does that because there's investors and stuff that come in too. Not always. Most of the time. I mean, you have I mean, to get I've, capital I've, I've from raised, somewhere. I have yeah. raised money before. Yeah. But I've also started companies that I didn't raise money for. How would you finance them? By working a part-time retail job for minimum wage and then saving up and then putting it in. I have felt judged for my income level. I think it's part of general society. We are always judging each other. Having used SNAP points before, like standing in a grocery store using the card that I've gotten for the government to pay for food and feeling the people behind me thinking that's something that you haven't earned or gotten. Has somebody ever asked you to use your SNAP on them? I mean, I have. Um, generally, there's not that much to go around. It's the same mentality when it's a dollar mm. versus SNAP. Somebody could still ask me to share. Well, you get it. Why can't you help me out? I didn't step forward because me personally, I surround myself with people that just like, what's in my bank account just doesn't matter to the people that are around me. I do think a lot of judgment towards how much you make reflects on like your dating experience. That I, I do feel. <laughs> See, I've never had yeah. that because I'm no? so frugal. If there are <laughs> girls that are out there who want me for my money, mm -hmm. like they should know I'm probably like the cheapest person out there. I, I literally <laughs> will wait like 9 p.m. for happy hour to start just so I get the happy hour menu. Oh, and so, like, so I would be like, <laughs> I would be like the last person any sort of like gold digger would want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I find myself in situations with these boys that have no job, mm. no nothing, and I end up taking on these charity cases of yeah. relationships. Oh, why don't you put him on or build him up? And it's like, 
you can't build. Yeah, it's not build a bear. Build. <laughs> I mean, you can. I, I mean, I've yeah. met guys I've dated that you know go on to have successful businesses from my input. And, you know, you want to date somebody equal or greater, but then you don't want to be materialistic about mm -hmm. like, well, I only date people with money because I make money. Exactly. Anyone can become rich if you work hard enough. So I just think that anyone could become rich if they actually like believed in themselves and took the risk to actually believe in themselves, that there is some success at the end of the line of that. I feel like a lot of it comes down to mindset first and really having the belief that you can do that. I know for me, one of my biggest concerns was I didn't have any skills whatsoever and I didn't get into college. I have like a 2.0 GPA in high school. Like it was terrible. I had such bad grades, but I really turned that into a positive and I really believe this actually happened for a reason because now I could pursue something else which was real estate because I didn't require a college degree and looking back now that was the best thing that had ever happened. That's like a really sticky situation with anyone can become like rich and because I don't think that's completely yeah. true. A lot of people can if they have like connections and stuff you know but I feel like sometimes people like they work two jobs or sometimes they have other things going on. They have to pay their needs first. They don't always have like money for that, you know? Because mm -hmm. like my dad, he's like a landscape worker. He has tried making his own company and it doesn't always like work out. He has tried hard, it doesn't work. That's why I think it's like you have to have connects, you mm -hmm. know? That's why. Do you, do you well, mind if I interject? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah in, in terms of building connections, I didn't have any connections either when it comes to you know working in real estate. And what I did to make the connections is I went to open houses every single Sunday for months. And I probably met at least 50 or 60 real estate agents. And it was through that that I met one agent who was really gracious enough to say, if you want to come uh, work underneath me, I'm happy to do that. And it was really that connection, which you, you know, like you mentioned connection, that I met that person through just really kind of putting myself out there to meet people. There's a lot of institutional and systemic barriers that we aren't really talking about. If you walk into like a Beverly Hills $5 million house not speaking English, they're probably not gonna give you the like hookup. We don't tend to move within circles where those connections cross economic and socioeconomic lines. But even beyond that, I wanna say like, you took a big risk and your risk paid off. But what if your risk hadn't paid off? And that's for a lot of people who do try and start their own business or try and start their own YouTube channel. That risk doesn't pay off and there's no real safety net there. So we're not really getting an adequate side of people who have like taken that entrepreneurial risk and not been able to take it again. I'm almost worried it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy though. If you go in it fearing, oh, what am I gonna fail? And that becomes your main focus. I think more people are less likely to take risks actually needed to succeed because they're more focused on not failing, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think your beliefs create the level of action you take and the level of action you take determines your results and it is cyclical. I am not obligated to give to the less fortunate. Uh, so the reason I stood up on this one is I actually, one of the missions in my organizing is getting away from this kind of notion that we have that charity or philanthropy is the way in which we solve social problems. At the same time, like, I still give people money when I have extra change in my pocket, so I don't want to seem like I'm totally opposed to it. I agree with that. I've given people money and not gotten it back. I've given people money and they've wasted it on drugs. Why did I even give you the money to begin with if you weren't going to use it to better yourself? Is it my job to make sure that you're not going hungry? No, we have plenty of, you know, organizations that will make sure that you're eating, make sure that you have a roof over your head. Yeah. It doesn't have to fall on my shoulders, per se. I feel like when you say, are you obligated to give to the unfortunate, it's always the mindset of, like, money. Well, guess what? I have no money currently to give. Um, but I have, like, my morality. I have my goodness about me. You know, I, I'm just trying to build a community, especially when you have a group of people that is creative and supportive, you, you build faster than just by yourself. I, I don't always donate with money. Sometimes I'll go and I'll fill bags of mm -hmm. food for kids that are starving, you know what I mean? So yeah. it doesn't always have to be money. Like, I don't think it's our responsibility to give money uh, based off of what we think the person's gonna do with it. Like, that's on them if they choose to use it wrongly. It's our responsibility just to be generous. I am not afraid to spoil myself. I personally 
do spoil myself. I work hard to be able to go into a store and get something for myself. I bought a $4,000 hairless cat that I had genetically made. And when I was in high school, when I started making money, I went and got that cat. You know, when you're in middle school and everybody's hitting puberty and getting taller and boobs, and I didn't get any boobs. What did I do when I started making money? I went and bought boobs. It's like, <laughs> that's what I wanted. And you know, there's the controversy of like, you're gonna die from your implants. Like, I'll die a D cup and <laughs> I have no problem with it. So I, I rarely ever treat myself. I basically keep my spending at the same as when I was like, you know, 19 or 21. No, no matter how much money I make, I spend the exact same amount. For instance, it sounds crazy, uh, but when I was like 17, I wanted a Lamborghini and there was nothing I wanted more. I want to be that guy, 18 years old and pull up with a Lambo. Like that was my dream. But when I actually got the money to go and buy the car, all of a sudden I realized like, wait a second, that's stupid. I'm not going to get the car. I'm, I'm going to invest it in real estate instead. But then I'm going to wait and then I'm going to get the Lamborghini. And then you save up even more and then you realize, wait, the Lambo is still stupid. Let me go and you know, invest it. And even now, like the chase and ambition of getting something is way more fun and enjoyable than actually getting that thing. Mm. I don't really spoil myself because I always buy my needs first. I usually wait till like my next check to see if I have extra money and if I do, then I spoil myself. But if I don't, then I just, I don't. I think it's interesting also that almost all of us have associated spoiling ourselves with spending money and at yeah, the same sure. time said spending that money is very unfulfilling. It's weird because even myself, like I really just like having an F off day and I just hang out and don't do anything and have any responsibilities, but I don't think about it as spoiling myself even though that's my favorite time to spend. I wish I had more money. <laughs> For me, I think it's always a comfort thing knowing that I have a little bit more saved up or invested. And I think it could just be a psychological thing that no matter how much money I have, it's always psychologically never going to be enough because that becomes your new normal. So I think you're always chasing that. See, I want more money so that I can pay off like my debt and travel. Yeah. And like help help some family members and that's it. That's why I mean that's why I want money. I mean I don't want to be like oh give me money you know but like I just want it for my needs you know or just for like a car because I need a car you know or just stuff my family needs stuff my friends need. I think for me if I'm honest with myself it's getting further away from how broke I was because I'm mm. scared of that ever happening again. There is no end because of that. Uh, so of course. Everyone could always use more money. Like I've met billionaires who could definitely say that they would want more money, mm -hmm. but more, I want to see a society in which the money that we have doesn't determine all of our possibilities. Because it seems like when we talk about solving problems, it comes back to money. My utopian vision is like a, a society where money really doesn't matter because we don't really need it to figure out value, but it makes a good translation for the time mm -hmm. being. Oh yeah, I'll tell you all about credit yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this episode of Middle Ground, guys. We love having different people this time around just to get different perspectives. Exactly. If you guys enjoyed this episode and want to continue the discussion, join our Facebook group in our link below. We also have this super cool Instagram page. If you guys aren't following at this point, you're kind of weird. So follow us, Jubilee Media. As always, leave a comment below, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.